Knights of the Blind refers to back in 1925 when Helen Keller attended a Lions convention and she asked the Lions Club members at the time to take up her cause to be Knights of the Blind and help address preventable blindness and hearing loss. And here in Oregon, in fact here in Beaverton, uh, Lions Clubs do an amazing job of keeping that promise that was made to Helen Keller. So on Knights of the Blind, we introduce you to people that, well, are Knights of the Blind. And tonight, I'm very happy to introduce you to Wally Anderson, who is a member of the Beaverton Lions Club and works for the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. Wally, welcome to Knights of the Blind. Thank you very much. So, I understand that you're involved with this mobile health screening program. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the MHSP program does and how you help people. Well, we travel throughout the state and uh, we do vision and hearing screenings for kids in schools. And um, in our public screenings, we do uh, vision, hearing, blood pressure, glaucoma, and diabetes testing. And we've uh, found people all over the state that that uh, are in need, and um, uh, it's it's our pleasure to uh, help these folks. And and um, uh, our screening program is growing leaps and bounds, and uh, at more than we had ever anticipated in our our early years. And and uh, it's it's just a great program to be involved with. In the early days, so we're going to go back in time a little bit to about eh, 1999 or so when you became a Lions Club member. Okay. And then if I understand it right, uh, you were a truck driver, drove truck, and you retired. And then it's around 2001, 2002 where somebody says, hey, I understand you used to drive a truck. How would you like to help people through this mobile health screening program? So initially, this program was in a 64-foot truck. Describe that a little bit. Well, yeah, so that's uh, we had uh, at the time I joined, we had two actually trailers that we were pulling around the state, and um, uh, you walk in the, the one end of the trailer, and and you get screened for vision and uh, blood pressure, and and in the middle of the trailer is diabetes and and uh, uh, glaucoma, and at the far end with a enclosed uh, area is a hearing test and then you out the back door. So uh, we could get through a lot of people in a day and um, we would find many, many people everywhere we go that need our help. Visualize, if you will, this truck with Wally driving it, uh, traveling around through every county in, in Oregon, um, Eastern Oregon, Southern Oregon. You've been over the mountains many times, <laughs> really? uh, up and down the Willamette Valley, the Oregon coast, you know, visiting the state fair, in Salem, visiting the Blues Festival here at Waterfront Park and doing, as you mentioned, uh, screenings for free for glaucoma, blood pressure, uh, diabetes, and, and, and hearing and, and, and vision screening, which is just, you know, it's, just, it, it, it's awesome that uh, you've really dedicated uh, this portion of, of your life to doing this. Uh, however, an interesting thing happened a few years ago when, if I understand it right, the, I don't always understand things <laughs> right, but if I understand right, the Oregon Lions did a little bit of an assessment of this program. They found out that, wow, 90% of the people that you were screening were school kids. So we're driving this truck all around the state, going to schools, probably not using the diabetes, the blood pressure, and the glaucoma. Right That's there. right, just vision and hearing. And we were maxed number of kids from the time we could first start in the morning till buses came to the school, the max that I ever got was 350 kids a day. Okay, so when most of us were children, and when we were in school, you know, we had our, our eyes screened, we had our vision screened. Uh, for me, you know, I remember down in Salem at Leslie Junior High at the time, going into the gymnasium, and we had our vision screened with these charts on the walls, and uh, using this truck, it was a little bit different. You'd pull into a parking lot, get the kids out of the classroom, down the hallway, through the rain, into the back of the truck. Yeah. And how long would it take you to do, let's just say, let's say we got a school of 500 kids. How long with the truck would it take you to screen all those kids? Well, it'd take more than one day because we couldn't get that many in in a day um, of 500. Uh, 300 was, 350 was the max that I ever did. And uh, we that was, like I say, it was from early morning to late at night. Um, 
uh, late well, when the bus had got there. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we knew that we needed another another way to do this. If we were ever going to grow and get all the kids in those schools, we needed a new system. And, and now this system, I believe, involves some fuel-efficient cars and some newer technology. In fact, the newest technology, these photo screeners that are little Polaroid uh, kind of size cameras, little handheld audiometers to do hearing screening as opposed to a big you know, computer typewriter size, size right. item. Mm -hmm. And so the program is more cost effective, but much more importantly, you're screening tons more children every year. Right. I think we've screened as high as 700 kids in a day. In one day? In one day. How long yeah. would that take previously? 700 kids you could do? We did a couple of days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So somebody told me a story recently uh, in Sweet Home. There's a school nurse there that said, well, what did, what, what well, did she say? She told me that uh, at the end of the three days that it took me to do her, her four schools. Um, okay, so you did four, four schools, schools in, in three, three days. days. Yeah. Okay. And she said it took her um, uh, four months to do those schools by herself. Okay, so what you did in three days used to take her four months. Right. Wow. Yeah, so... so Kids are out of the classroom not as long, I, I imagine. Yeah, we're, we're doing a, a whole class in 15 minutes. That's amazing. You know, okay. uh, not too long ago, um, I was in, in Salem and at a board of education meeting, and they're talking about this new law that's passed that now requires uh, families to prove that their children have had a deny exam or vision screening by the time they're seven years old. That's right. And what they're recognizing is that in order for, get this, in order for a kid to learn well, it would be helpful if they could see well. <laughs> go figure. Yeah, go, go figure. Um, so this is what you're doing, really, is you're traveling around Oregon. Exactly. Making sure kids can see well so that they can learn well. Exactly. Can you imagine a child that, that can't see well sitting in the back of the room just messing around because he can't see what's going on on the board. And until I got my glasses when I was in the second grade, I was that child. Hmm. And they thought I was stupid because, you know, I couldn't pass the grades. But I couldn't see anything. <laughs> why, why pay attention to what's up on the blackboard? Right, when I can't see it. <laughs> so I imagine there's still kids like, like, like that today. Oh yes, I, I, we run across them every day, and I, I, I find kids that, that just break your heart, you know, and uh, you want to help them, you want to, you want to reach out and hug them. You can't do that anymore in these, these days. But give them a high five. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's about all you can do, and um, uh, I've got, I've got stories that just, just break. I think about them every day. Um, yeah. Well, I don't want to have my heart broken, but go ahead and uh, tell us tell us a story. Give us an example of uh, of a kid that, okay. that that you were able to help. All right, I was um, I was a lion when I when I started this job, and um, I knew I was a lion because I filled out the papers and <laughs> and um, you know paid my dues and and uh, I was in um, Newport and. Um, at a uh, screening, and this child came through, and uh, I was watching. I happened to be on the trailer, and I was watching the screening being done at the far end of the trailer, and and um, she failed miserably this mm. uh, the the test, and so I thought, hmm, this girl has to be able to see because she was moving around very well, and and so I got her to my table, and I asked her. Um, uh, I did a, a close reading test on her, and this close reading test, uh, I found that she, her close reading vision was 2,800 in wow. both eyes, and so that <clears throat> meant she couldn't see anything up close, and I asked her how she was doing in school, and she said, I read like this, and um, so I, <laughs> I asked her, well, do you have glasses, and she said, no. But but I know I need them because I keep running into things and falling down, and that child broke my heart, you know. And because I knew 
from that day forward that we could help this girl, that's when I became a real lion. Mm -hmm. That was my initial story of her. Well, it, it's a great story, and I think it's important for people to understand that, uh, you know, that was one little girl, uh, and you help thousands and thousands and thousands of kids a a every year, and you were describing driving around uh, in, in, in this truck that uh, would help you screen, I think, maybe 20, 25,000 kids a year, which yes. is really good. Right. So I understand. Um, I like to say that our, the Knights of the Blind staff have this amazing research team that gives me these great statistics. And one is that in Oregon, uh, well, vision professionals recommend that kindergarten, first, third, and fifth graders have their vision screened every year. And uh, in Oregon, there's about 165,000 kids in kindergarten, first, third, and fifth grade. Right. So up until a couple years ago, you were screening at your organization 25,000 kids a year, which is really great, but it's not 165,000. That's right. So I've been told about this 2020 vision of one day by the year 2020, every child in Oregon having their vision screened. And, and that's what led to the, the acquisition of this new technology and these fuel efficient vehicles. What would you tell a school, a teacher, a school nurse, a principal, if you had an opportunity that was not screening their kids because they didn't have the money for it or they didn't have the staffing for it, what would you tell them that they should do? Well, I would um, plead with them to uh, get a hold of the Lion, uh, Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation and um, set up a time for us to come out and screen their kids. Um, it's uh, very, very affordable, and we can screen them with very little uh, uh, disturbance for the classes because we can screen a class now in 15 minutes where, where it used to take at least 30 to 40 minutes to do a, do a class. And uh, uh, so the disruption is very small. The, uh, the area that we need to work in is very small. Uh, we don't need uh, the tremendous, um, you know, we don't have the trailer anymore, so uh, we don't need a lot of room, but we just need enough that we can get the kids in and get them out. We can, if we're doing hearing, we can screen 20 kids at a time, and if we're doing uh, just vision, uh, we, we can go through uh, a whole school in a day easily uh, in most cases. So. You bet, you bet. So, you know, being that we're sitting in the, uh, the, the television studios of uh, Tualatin Valley Community Television, uh, we'll use Beaverton as an example. So the Beaverton School District, uh, great school district, uh, but we're facing the reality of how are they going to, you know, afford to continue um, to, to provide something that's just not fitting into their budget anymore. So what they did, if I understand it right, is, is reached out to the Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation. They took you up on your, on, on your <laughs> advice, and they figured out a way where they didn't have to pay for the entire program. The Oregon Lions Sight and Hearing Foundation, they raise money from foundations, from individuals, and they usually charge a Lions Club a, a nominal fee. It's about 10% of the actual cost. And then they raise the money themselves. Well, the Beaverton School District paid that Lions Club fee um, which is really subsidizing the, the program. And the long story short being that because of you, because of the Lions, uh, every, every school in Beaverton, every, every elementary school in Beaverton for the last two school years have had you come in and, and screen uh, their children for vision and I think in hearing also. Yeah, vision and hearing in most, in most uh, for the uh, kindergarten, first, third, and fifth. And, in uh, the charter schools, then we did the the other uh, grades in that school in vision only. Okay, so, so. Um, you know, I think most people probably realize that it's really important for kids to get glasses that need them. Uh, but here's the reality: is that according to studies, about one in four kids have vision issues, correctable mm -hmm. vision issues. One in four yet less than one in 10 kids actually have eyeglasses that need them. And I think for the most part, it's like uh, a lot of kids that you probably see, they don't know. That's right. They, that they, they can, need glasses. They can uh, get around it, uh, and they, they think that uh, everybody sees just like them. Right. And, yeah, uh, and um, uh, 
uh, we can <laughs> change their life tremendously from uh, um, from from going from not being a good student to being top A student. So you bet. It's just it's it's very heartwarming for us to uh, have a child come up to you and say. You checked our, me last year, and I needed glasses, and now I can see better than I ever thought I could see. Well, and I've heard parents also uh, thank you and thank the Lions for the fact that their, their children used to act up in the classroom. They used to maybe be the class clown or, or, or worse, and it was simply because they couldn't see. They weren't engaged in, in the classroom experience. Put glasses on them. All of a sudden, everything that the teacher is saying to them makes sense. Right. And even even um, some of the kids with hearing problems, the same same situation. I, uh, I was at a, a school up the McKenzie River, and they um, uh, I did the class, and <laughs> one of them I put right on top and took to the principal, and I showed her, and she looked at that paper, and she looked at me, and she said, well, that explains a lot. Mm. Wow. So was, that child had been acting up and, and been the, the class clown, just like you said, and, and now, you know, his life changed. Yeah, you know, what, what a, a great way to change a, a, a child's life from the standpoint that studies also tell us that, uh, you know, being able to read at the appropriate grade level is so critical to a child advancing successfully in school. And uh, the study that I most recently have, have seen is that uh, third grade, third graders must be able to read at a third grade level. And if they don't, they, they're more likely to fall behind. And then these are our kids that are dropping out of school. Uh, it's not that they're not smart kids. It's that they were not uh, connected. They didn't stay engaged to, to the classroom experience. Exactly. So what you're doing is, you know, not only are you a knight of the blind because you're helping identify kids that need to have their, their vision corrected, but you're keeping kids on track academically, and you're giving them an opportunity to be successful in life. And, and it's, I have what I call the best job hmm. that I could ever have. Is uh, what I'm doing now is the the highlight of my life because I enjoy mingling with the kids, and I enjoy uh, um, finding the ones that that need help and, and knowing that we have the me means to uh, and the methods to um, help those kids. Let's talk a little bit about the methods because uh, we mentioned earlier about this new technology and, and, and I think it's important for you to tell us a little bit about uh, and we'll, we'll put a picture uh, of one of these photo screeners uh, up on the screen so that those of you at home can take a look at, at these uh, spot photo screeners yes. that, that help not just take a snapshot of a child's eye, but it's actually measuring refraction, I understand. Right. What, what, tell us a little bit about those. Well, I, the, the, uh, they're called a spot, and they, they, uh, we can take a picture of the eye in about 15 seconds. They don't have to read a chart. They don't have to look at uh, um, anything. They just, uh, the camera takes the picture. It'll tell us exactly what's going on inside that eye. And uh, if it's bad, we'll print it out and send, send it along with the papers to the parents, and they can take it right to the doctor, and the doctor knows exactly where uh, the problem is. And we've had doctors tell us that a regular exam with a chart on the wall would not have caught or these. Or a regular screening. Uh, screening, yeah, right. that's what I mean, screening. Sure. Um, uh, uh, with a chart on the wall would not have caught the problem that the, the uh, spots caught. So, um, boy, we're just in heaven with the, what, what's going on. Yeah, so for, you know, for those that have not volunteered before uh, at a school-based vision screening, or for those of you that are not ophthalmologists or optometrists or opticians and are not familiar uh, with you know, the, the experience of vision screening is that, yeah, it used to be a, a chart on the wall. Leah symbols, I think they're called. Uh, and then there's these light boxes that have the same symbols. But there's some subjectivity there. It's right. not a perfect process. And I think that's why some vision professionals are a little bit not completely comfortable with vision screening because they're not objective. Well, this technology is objective. 
Yes, it's, <laughs> the, <laughs> there's we can't make the mistake that that we could um, uh, if we were doing it with the screen. The the uh, spot does it all. We don't do anything. We just aim it. <laughs> and so a couple of years ago, uh, I volunteered at a screening event, and I was shocked that after five minutes of being shown how to do it, they I was being trusted to identify what line, you know, everyone, you know, think about that, that big E, and then there's some smaller letters, and they get smaller and smaller, and then I have to kind of subjectively say, well, she's seen at this 2040 line. Uh, great that there was some screening taking place. Um, however, I was not qualified to make that decision. Now, with these, you're telling us that with these spot devices, I can now volunteer, be trained in how to use them, and it removes completely the guesswork of where that child is in terms of their vision. That's right, and the fun part of it is I only have to show you once how to do it, and the camera uh, does it all. Uh, 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 it's the same thing, just add, put in the number, and it'll take the picture. It's just a phenomenal machine. So th these are cameras. They're also computers. I understand, and we won't spend much time, but <clears throat> briefly we'll explain how uh, the results are able to be downloaded onto a USB stick, um, can protect confidentiality of the results and still give them to the school so that the families can be quickly notified if their child should get a full-on dilated eye exam, right. which is really the whole purpose of the screenings. Exactly. Is to identify what kids, not only what kids need to, but let's, let, let's not falsely refer kids to an eye exam if they're not necessarily needing it. Exactly. Yeah. So it removes the false positives uh, as well. So this technology is, is uh, it, it just, state it's of the art. Yeah. It's state of the art. Yeah. It's, um, it's helping kids get eyeglasses that need them. It's also preserving sight. Uh, there's an issue, a lot of people know it as lazy eye. Um, uh, those in the vision health field would refer to it as amblyopia. You want to tell us a little bit uh, about that issue? Yes, we um, as uh, also with the spots we we do a uh, stereo test we call it and check for amblyopia and um, it's, uh, it tells us whether the eyes are working together or not and if uh, there's a problem there then we can um, send a, a report home to the parents and and uh, these kids can get help now if you can't if you catch them before about age nine hmm. we can correct that and that that's the fun part we when we when we have these little littler kids because that's why we're doing grade school kids we can we can catch these little kids and correct the problem and they'll see with both eyes all all their life but with um, without us doing this they'll lose that eye and go blind by the time they're adults so yeah, and is it? I believe it's accurate that <clears throat> all about four percent of all children have amblyopia. Uh, you're now screening this year. I understand it's going to be close to seventy thousand kids. Seventy thousand. Um, I'm not great at math, but I'm going to just say that's about three thousand kids that you're catching with amblyopia. Um, if it's not detected and that good eye isn't patched so that the brain is working with the optic nerve of the lazy eye, Correct. Um, that child loses eyesight by the time they're eight, nine, maybe 10 years old. Correct. So you certainly are a knight of the blind. <laughs> when I was a little kid, my, one of my older brothers had a patch on his eye for a while. I didn't know, you know, I was probably four or five myself. I now know that he had lazy eye, he had amblyopia. And, and I'm just so grateful that, uh, that his vision issue was detected at a, at a young enough age. Right. Yeah. He wore those glasses that made him look like, uh, remember the TV show, My Three Sons? Oh, yeah. His nickname was Ernie, because <laughs> he looked like Ernie, but uh, yeah. So, um, David, I'm glad that they caught your amblyopia at a young age. Okay, so, you know, the future of vision screenings is in good hands with Lions of Oregon, and, and we're really grateful for the work that Lions do. You're a Beaverton Lion. That's uh, right. Tell us a little bit, because some people might not know what Lions do. Um, Tell us a little bit about Lions. Do you have fun? Do you meet? Do I... Yeah, we. Every Lions Club sets up their own times, but uh, in Beaverton we meet uh, first and third Wednesday, uh, Tuesdays of every month, and um, we have an hour meeting, 
and um, uh, enjoy uh, our company and we generally have a speaker that comes in and um, so we learn interesting topics about our, our community and um, it's uh, just a great organization for friendship for life and um, and for the the jobs that we do uh, uh, Beaverton does uh, Meals on Wheels and mm -hmm. all kinds of uh, different um, programs like that but um, we all contribute to the Lions, uh, Oregon Lions Site and Foundation and uh, so our money is being used um, wisely by uh, the Oregon Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation and that way um, uh, we know that every dollar we put in comes back to our community uh, as a five dollar bill. So. Yeah, so lions uh, in Oregon are really amazing. And I, I get that not everybody understands, you know, who lions are and what they do. And you have all these great activities that help people. Um, but, you know, whether or not you're living in Jordan Valley down in southeastern uh, Oregon or if you're in Astoria in northwestern Oregon or, you know, if you're in Brookings Harbor <laughs> in, in southwest Oregon or if you're up in Joseph, uh, and, and inter enterprise. You've been to all these places, <laughs> yes. screening kids. Uh, regard, or if you're in the Willamette Valley or Central Oregon, if you want to do something of value for other people and maybe help keep this promise that was made to Helen Keller, uh, there's a phone number that uh, is up on the screen. Uh, there's an email address. Uh, there might even be a, a website you know, address up there you can check out um, to find out more information about how you can uh, get involved with a local Lions Club. You wouldn't even have to necessarily join the club. You could help the Lions screen kids, uh, test them for screen, for sight, for hearing, help Lions keep this promise to Helen Keller uh, and be Knights of the Blind. So Wally, thank you so much for being here tonight, for thank being you. a Knight of the Blind, and thank you for joining us again on Knights of the Blind.